but it's free, so, you know, you, can, you can't argue with that. Well, no, I, I think you can argue with that. There's no point in making a free product that doesn't actually have any utility. Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. Today, we're looking at Luna, which is the new free DAW from UAD. You have to have an Apollo interface to use this, but if you've got one, you can download it and give it a try. Now, this video took me <laughs> too many days to make because I gave it a go the first time and found myself really frustrated with a bunch of workflows in it. And I was like, it cannot work like this. This just seems silly. So I did some research. I watched a bunch of videos from UAD talking about it. I dove into the software a lot more and some of the things that frustrated me the first time I managed to find workarounds and whatnot for. But I still don't really like a lot of the ways that this software functions. This is coming from my bias as someone who likes to do a lot of complex editing to clips and stuff inside the sequencer in Ableton. So there are a lot of things I think Luna is amazing for, and they're not necessarily the things that I value the most in terms of my editing workflow. So I've tried to be as objective as possible in this in this look at the software. However, that that is the bias that I'm coming from, and some of the reactions that I have, are my first unfiltered reactions to frustrations that I'm having with the software. One of my favorite things about Luna is how they have gone about allowing you to have not VSTs, not plugins, but actual integrations with the mixer. When I was making a video about what I wanted to see in Reason 11, this was something that someone suggested about having different like modules that you could actually have in the SSL mixer in Reason. And I always thought that was a great idea. And so I was stoked when I saw that this is essentially what Luna is offering. Regardless of, of what I think about it currently, I'm still super excited to watch its development over the next couple of years because I think it has the potential to be really, really cool. So Luna doesn't have support for VSTs. You have to use your AU plugins, which could be a problem for some people. However, the Reason React plugin does work inside Luna. So I got started with that. The, um, the piano roll is like built into the channel. That's a bit different. Whoa, what did you just do? Oh, hello, okay. I think the ability to actually do any kind of editing in Luna is probably its biggest weakness at the moment. Yes, you can do some stuff, some of it works kind of well, some of it doesn't work very well at all, and some things you wanna do just don't exist. But the biggest frustration that I have with Luna that I think is inexcusable, and if they add this, I'll like it a whole lot more, there's no actual system for comping. There is a workaround, but it doesn't feel smooth and it's kind of awkward to do. It's got this version tool, so I've got my two different versions of my guitar takes here. Let's just say I like the first two bars of version one. I have to highlight those first two bars, then I go command copy. Then I go up to version four and I paste those two bars in. Now I'm like, right back here checking my versions and I'm like all right I want the next two bars from version 2 so I go copy that and I go back up to version 4 and I paste that in there and as a piece of software that seems to be mainly for tracking and mixing at least that's how I kind of see it it just doesn't make sense that there's no really simple and effective system for comping Luna looks really good as as a piece of software like visually it's really appealing and I think the fact that you don't have to ever save is great too. We set the pre-roll to one. We can see the pre-roll pre -roll here, which is all very good and well, unless you're trying to record from the star. Then it just, then it just starts. But I'm like, what's the point of a pre-roll if you can't have it count you in from the star? So I suppose if you want to have it count you in from the start, you have to actually move all of your tracks to the second bar so that your pre-roll works. Ah. 
What? Command A. Command A. What? Command A. Wait. Okay, clicked off. Command A. Command A. Hang on. Command A. Are you serious? Command. Oh. So they made this big deal in one of the videos I watched about how, you know, it was it was intuitive. Command A is an extremely intuitive keyboard command. Why is it not letting me highlight every clip in my sequencer? Aside from comping, my second least favorite thing about Luna is the fact that you have to push so many buttons and things aren't just simple to do. For example, when you record enable something, if you want to record, every single time you want to record, you have to push record and then play. As well as little things like when you stop recording, the clip isn't selected, so when I push delete, it doesn't get rid of my take so I can get straight back into doing it. I've got to, I've got to do an extra click. You can't just hit the record button and have it, have it record. Which doesn't seem like a big deal necessarily, but when you're having to push two buttons, every single time you're doing something, these little things just kind of add up to ruin the overall experience. It's a weird one. I'm not sure what kind of role this is trying to fill in the market. Like if it didn't have that really unique mixer feature, I'd probably disregard it entirely. Also, the fact that there's no keyboard command for the metronome is really frustrating. The fact that you can't have a click for the pre-roll while having the metronome off, so if you've got a drum beat you're quite happy to play along with, and you want a pre-roll, you have to have the click happening during your drum beat. Like that's that's just frustrating. And the pre-roll, if you're trying to have a count in from the beginning of your track, you can't use the pre-roll. You have to drag everything over one bar so you can have one bar pre-roll. Which doesn't seem like it needs to be like that. Like, can't, why can't the pre-roll just work from the beginning of the song? That doesn't really seem like necessarily too much of a big deal, but when I'm thinking that this is a piece of software that appears to be really focused on tracking and mixing, that seems like a little bit of an oversight in that department. This is a good time to test user presets. I was just thinking I want to record some guitar, but my guitar session that I set up is actually another entire session. So. What would be really cool is if I can sh save this whole channel strip. I don't understand why you can't save a mixer channel. Like if you've got this, this amazing mixer where you can have extensions to the mixer and stuff, why can't you save the whole mixer channel? In this case, I'd set up a guitar amp with a a uh, compressor patch on it and it's on the next insert slot and it sounded really good but I couldn't save that whole that whole sequence there's no way to kind of group stuff which does make it really frustrating if you've got a whole chain of plugins that you want to transfer between projects but then they go pull stunts like forcing me to have every plugin on my computer and not giving me an easy way to sort through which ones are mine if you open up the console you'll notice that you can actually go down here to settings and choose to hide the plugins that you don't own. The reason this is really important is there are a ton of plugins and if you try and insert one, now it's only showing what I own and I don't have to scroll through all these other ones. You cannot hide it in Luna. You literally have every single one of the UAD plugins inside your list here. On the console software, I had to actually manually click on every single one that wasn't mine to hide it. And in Luna, there's no way to do that at all. You just have to view all the ones that you don't own and there's no indication of what ones you do own. If I search for Marshall, Marshall Plexi Classic, that's the only one that I actually own. Try to record some guitar real quick. That 
was that was my best take. But hold up a second. There's this version thing, right? So I can click version one or version two, and it gives me different versions that I just recorded. Which is helpful because version one sucked and version two is the one I want. However, what I'm just noticing is that it doesn't create the versions automatically. I had to actually go down here and click plus to create a new version which I could then record my new version on. And then I'm able to select between the versions that I want. Which, which is fine. I wish it did it automatically though. It, it's kind of funny, I, I don't think I've found a company yet that I love so much and hate so much at the same time. Like I said, the Apollo interface is the best interface that I've used and I think it's incredible. There's so much I love about the company and how its plugins work with the interface and all of that. This monitor knob down here reflects what my interface is actually saying. Same with the input on the guitar channel here. So it integrates so well with the Apollo hardware. And I just find it ironic that on one side of things, UAD has got some of the best usability I have ever seen in terms of integration between the interface and the software. On the other side of things, the user experience is some of the worst I have ever seen in terms of <laughs> like, installing plugins and stuff. One of the other things I noticed when I was using Luna is the fact that it seems to have all of these little features and stuff that become redundant in certain circumstances and rather than disappear so that you can't make a mess with them, they stay where they are and potentially create problems. It's cool that it's got these um these options to change the, the size and the height and stuff. But like, what doesn't seem to be thought out very effectively is if I'm on one of these really small options and I'm thinking, what is my baseline doing? Let me just have a, have a, uh, all right, at this point my audio gets messed up. So I apologize. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to do this consistently. You know, I want a quick peek at what my bass is doing. Um, well, I can't actually even click on it right now because it won't give me the right mouse head. So let's go one step bigger. All right. So I'm in here and I want to I want to see what my bass is doing. So I don't know about you guys, but I I can't really see or do anything in that size. What am I supposed to do with this? Yo. <laughs> I mean, it's not big enough to actually practically do anything <laughs> but they still allow you to edit things I mean I feel like that's a great way to accidentally make a mess I've got to go to like what was it small small is still too small to actually do any kind of meaningful editing Medium is default. This does not really seem that well thought out to me. Why is there a like adjustable fader thing in this tiny little thing and if I make it smaller it still becomes an adjustable fader thing that I can continue to use. Like I said I think this software operates very smoothly and like I was I'm enjoying using it so far but then when I come stumble across things like this, when it's in clips mode, this is redundant. Why is it even here right now? It's like, it's not controlling anything. And I don't understand this. It seems like a lazy implementation of ideas, which makes it just feel to me like they've gone and created this half ass product. However, I get that it's the first release. They're asking people for feedback. And so I am hoping that they'll address a whole bunch of things like this in the future because even though I've got these criticisms of it I do think it's super cool and if they can address some of the frustrations that I have with it then I think it could very well become my main tracking tool just because of how stupidly easy it is to integrate with the Apollo interface. So one of the things that UAD has introduced with this new Luna software are these new instruments. 
You've got Shape, which is like a sampler thing that has some really, really cool sounds. And it's got some simple kind of performance controls. It looks easy to set up. It looks dope. However, you can't use it in anything other than Luna. So let's program Equip B. Now in one of their videos, they talk about how it gets processed on the Apollo interface and that's great and all of that. But I don't understand why you can't use it in another piece of software because you can use all the other UAD plugins in another piece of software. This doesn't bother me so much with shape. It's a sampler, whatever. I, I mean, there's other things I can use. But they've gone and released a mini Moog that looks sick and I would love to own it. However, I really don't know if I want to buy it if the only system that I can use it in is Luna. I just don't know if it's worth the money at that point. Like if I could use the Moog in Ableton, that'd be sick, but I don't know if I want to have to pull open a completely different piece of software that I'm not entirely sold on yet to be able to use this instrument. So we set out to make Luna feel really natural. Uh, a major goal of ours is that there's no roadblocks to just getting things done and feeling like you're having a musically creative and productive experience. Yeah. So to do that, we've done things like skip the idea of editing mode. So they make this big deal about it being kind of one window, which is not, there's at least two. And they're like, you know, we don't have a particular edit mode. We're not switching modes and all this stuff. You kind of are switching modes. If you're expanding this clip to fill the whole screen, that's essentially an edit mode, but it doesn't actually become any more useful. I think having the ability to make small quick edits within the sequencer like you can do in Luna is cool. I think that's really awesome. In fact, I'd love to see more DAWs have that. But then to simply expand it to give you kind of like a half-baked edit mode is actually kind of annoying. What I would prefer to see is the ability to edit within your sequencer and then expand it but have that open up a separate edit mode. Like Logic does or Ableton does or Reason does or virtually anything else does. Actually, not how Reason does. I don't like how Reason's edit mode fills the entire screen. I think it's better to be able to see part of the sequencer if you want to and see the edit mode at the same time. That, I think, is a more useful kind of way to deal with an edit mode. All right, we've got a bass. can put that down, drag it out. Oh, but now I need to be back in my quarter note grid so I can work in this. Thing. So one of the reasons why I think having a separate edit mode is so important is because when you have a grid, most of the time I find myself wanting it to be different for my edit mode and different for my sequencer, which makes editing and dragging clips and moving around in both of these really easy and sensible. You don't have this in Luna. If they had an adaptive grid, I probably wouldn't mind because then it would always be sensible but they don't. And so I found myself frequently having to change to 16ths if I'm actually trying to do anything in terms of MIDI editing. And then I'd go back to the sequencer and move a clip around and be like, crap, this is, I, I can't tell how much I'm moving it because the control is too fine. So I'd have to go adjust it back to like a quarter note or something. All these little extra steps. This next clip shows how difficult it is to actually set up your piano roll to make any changes if you need to. All right, so to change my bass to G right now, I have to drag that down carefully so I don't overdo it, make it a little bigger. Let's try, make, let's try B. Ah, what just happened? No. Oh, are you serious? This is on grid quarter. Why is that on quarter? Certain elements of Luna are super fluid and easy to use. Other elements are just dumb. Like, <laughs> it feels like they haven't put a lot of thought into certain things. It feels like they were like, oh, we've got this great idea to have the MIDI editing actually be a part of the sequence so you don't, you don't have to have a separate window. And at the surface level, that sounds really cool. That sounds like a really great idea. 
but the execution of that idea doesn't actually give you any benefits in terms of your workflow. The way they've executed that idea actually makes life more difficult for you most of the time when you're trying to do MIDI editing. I'm assuming what you're about to see next is just a bug, but I thought I'd include it anyway given how problematic Luna's MIDI editing functionalities have been. So what you're about to see in this clip is me trying to move a MIDI note literally a couple of squares to the left of the same note on the piano roll. And instead of doing that, it jumps up like a whole bunch of notes. What? No, 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 no. What the heck? I want to go left. What? What is happening? So if we go over to our mixer, I want to try group these tracks. If you have them both selected, bus, we'll call it keys, since keys, we'll call it keys. Console, oh see that's sneaky. I don't have the Neve summing. What happens if I hit okay? Console, Neve summing. Demo expired. Why does it suggest it? I don't, I don't want it by default. If I spell that, that shows me just the keys and the pads. What I want to know is does that also translate to the sequencer? Hello. That is dope. That is really cool. This is an extremely useful feature. This is great. Reason should have had this one. Uh, in fact, every door should have this one. This is dope. This is a great feature. So, in summary, here's how I feel about Luna at the moment. I think a lot of the ideas behind the product are incredible. However, right now, the benefits that I get from these ideas are massively offset by some of the problems I feel exist in Luna. Hey, that's the video guys. If you can hit the like button below, that'll really help us grow the channel. And leave a comment. Let me know what you think about Luna. I've tried to be as unbiased and objective as possible in this review. But if you've got an Apollo interface and haven't given Luna a go, try it out. It is pretty cool. Even if there are some things that I don't like about it. But I'd love to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments whether it's something that you think will be a crucial part of your workflow or like me, you feel like it needs a bit of love. Either way, I'll catch you guys next time.